Good afternoon, everyone, and I'll be speaking on intracoinal drinks in keratoconus. So, intacts are arc like polymethyl methacrylate intrastomal coronal ring segments that are surgically inserted into the deep cholinostroma to flatten the cornea. Intacts come in different sizes, and potentially many different combinations can be used to flatten the cornea and reduce astigmatism. Coming to the principle of intacts, intacts works on the principle of arc length shortening, which means that the outcome of the intacts is directly proportional to the thickness of the implant. The thicker the implant, more will be the flattening. They come in two shapes. One is a regular intact ring, other one is a steep rings. There is some technical specification difference between these two rings. Like regular ring is a hexagonal transfer shape with external diameter of 8.1 and with an inner diameter of 6.7 millimeter. And it comes in a, a steps of 0.5 increment from 0.25 to 0.45. Whereas SK rings are overall oval cross-section ring with outer diameter of 7 and inner of 6 millimeter. And it comes from the size of 0 0.21 to 0 0.45 and also same 0.5 increment. These are the prerequisite for intact planning intacts. Patient has to have clear central cornea. The co it, he has to be contactless intolerant because contactless is the first choice in these cases. The steep case should not be more than 50 adapters because above these, the corneas are usually thinner and the results are unpredictable. And the pachymetry in the location of intacts should be more than 450 microns. So these are the essential parameters for planning intacts. Location of cone, we have to look for mean refractive spherical equivalent, the mean K value, superior inferior asymmetry, steep axis, and thinnest point in six millimeter zone. So we'll take one by one. The first is a location of cone. So how to locate a cone? So cone can be either central or decentered cone. The centered cones are those cones in which the highest point of elevation within central three millimeter, within central three millimeter, or more than 50% of the cone located within the center three millimeter zone. For example, this is a well-centered cone. And decentered cone, the location of highest point of elevation is outside the three millimeter zone. For example, in this case, this is the highest point and it is outside the three millimeter zone. Or more than 50% of the cone is outside the three millimeter zone. Then it is called decentered cone. The next is mean refractive spherical equivalent. This is very simple. Everyone know how to calculate it. Full spherical with 50% cylinder gives you the spherical equivalent values. And there is a nomogram in which you can see how much is the spherical equivalent and you can choose the ring accordingly. Like, for example, in this case, minus 7 with minus 4, which is minus 9 adapter of spherical equivalent. And more than eight adapter, for more than 8 adapter spherical equivalent, you have to go for 0 0.45 regular ring or 0 0.45 SK ring. The third point is mean K value. Mean K value, you can easily note it from the get noted from the pentacam and if mean k is more, less than 55 regular rings works well and if it is very steep more than 55 then we should go for sk rings number four is superior inferior asymmetry how to find this difference of mean of superior three contiguous points in three millimeter zone to diagonally opposite three contiguous point if it is more than 50, if the difference is more than 15 dab, d then single ring is works well and if it is less than 15, then asymmetric rings, rings works well. So number five is choosing the correct axis. Incision has to be at the steep meridian. We should note the steep axis from OPSCAN and PENTACAM and refraction. And usually OPSCAN axis are preferred for planning the intacts because it's a placido-based device. I to be operated should be checked and sometimes a steep axis shown by OPSCAN is nasally or inferiorly. In such situation, the tangential method can be used. So how to choose the correct axis in these cases? So you have to see the direction in which the cone is progressing. For example, in this case, the cone is progressing in this way, in this direction. So you mark a, put an arrow in this direction and draw perpendicular to that because this is a flat meridian and you have to put a perpendicular to get the proposed incision location in these cases. And in the end, mark the six millimeter zone on the global pachymetry map and look for the thickness. We have to put the intaxing at 75% of the thinnest pachymetry in six millimeter zone. So for example, you have marked, this is a, these are the values, six millimeter here and here. Just mark a square here. And this is a zone in which we are going to put the intax. So 75% of 40507. 
so these are the nomogram provided by the company you can send your data to company and they can plan for you or you can plan yourself so in the combination ring symmetrical ring segments where two ring segments of same size are used and usually it is done in the decentered cone in the centered cone and asymmetric ring segment in which the two ring segments of different sizes are used and it is done in the decentered cone so these are the devices which are used for plan for performing in tax uh, procedure the first is a channel opener and this is a suction device this is a manual and when we used to perform manual in tax and this is a channel opener and these are for holding the in tax segments so coming to the in tax surgery so normally i perform in tax with the femto ldv and we have to create the channel with the femto second laser most of the femto machines have this software now once the channel is created the surgery becomes very simple you have to open the channel so usually the cut is on the both the side so you have to open the cut on the one side only you go perpendicular to the cornea vertically open it and then start inserting them we have to be very careful because chances of slippage of intact rings is very common and these are very costly rings so you cannot is uh, you cannot uh, lost lose it and so just keep inserting go up to the end of the channel because chances of extrusions are there <coughs> same procedure on the other side and once the rings are secured the procedure is over so these are some of the cases in which intact rings have been planned so you can see this is centered cone the symmetrical ring segment was planned and the flat you can see the flattening here the k1 from 59 to become 55 and 65 to 61 around 3 to 4 after flattening the other case decentered cone and uh, single ring was planned and you can note the flattening here the keratometry from 47 to become 44 and 52 become 49 the third case of asymmetric ring asymmetric ring and uh, asymmetric rings were planned for this case and the flattening you can see the flattening here so in tax can be performed as a single procedure or can be performed with c3r i always prefer to go with c3r because i get uh, additional flattening with if we plan the in tax with the c3r so no procedures without complications so intax also has some complications like segment movement with sub subsequent extrusion infection corneal thinning melting glare halos local local and intraocular inflammation so these are some of the uh, complications you can see the vascularization at the incision and both the segments are touching each other next case melting at the wound this is a case in which you can see the debris along the intact and this is a very common thing we do to the inflammatory response inflammatory response of the cornea for the for these rings and this is the broken intact segment after trauma so sometimes you have to you have to explant the intact also good part is this is this is a reversible procedure so you can explant whenever you want what you have to do just you have to dial it in opposite direction of insertion the explantation is done so if you don't get desired desired result or the result is opposite what you are trying to get it so you can explant one or both the rings so people have also started using ker segment that is corneal allogenic intrastromal ring segment so this is a new innovative technique in which instead of using plastic ring segments they are using donor corneal tissue strips are inserted in mid peripheral zone of keratoconus cornea to cause its flattening these segments are more biocompatible and less rigid in comparison to plastic ring segments as these segments integrate well with the recipient's cornea so reversibility could be an issue in a long term so you cannot remove it because it will integrate with the patient's cornea so in conclusion it proves its intact has proved its efficacy in the management of keratoconus so proper case selection is very important intact not only improve visual acuity it also makes contact lens wear more comfortable so because it induces flattening so fitting is very easy after this and finding the best nomogram for your patient is always the challenge thank you thank you so
I'll start my second presentation. There is keratoplasty techniques in hepatic diseases, and no financial disclosures. So I'll start from uh, collagen cross linkings. It's already already been discussed. So conventional cross linking, we all know what are the criteria. So if patient is not fit for collagen, uh, conventional collagen cross linking, what options we have? So this is a case of 19 year old male advanced keratoconus. The thinnest local pachymetry was 460 in the right eye and left eye was 328. The plan was to go for right epi of cross linking and in the left eye, what options we have? So I did a stromal lenticular assisted collagen cross linking in this case. So what you have to do, you have to harvest a donor graft and uh, soak in the riboflavin. And once it is soaked, place it on the patient's cornea after removing the epithelium of the patient's cornea. So it will work like a epi of cross-linking only. And then again, soak it and do the cross-linking. So temporary, you're temporarily increasing the thickness to avoid the endothelial damage with the epi of cross-linking in thinner corneas. And once the procedure is done, just throw the donor tissue. So the, this is case two, this 18 year old male Down syndrome patient. And this patient has a right eye corneal hydropsis scar and left eye thin cornea was around 340 micron. So the treatment plan was to go for right eye keratoplasty and the left eye. Should we wait for hydrops to occur or we can do something for these cases? So what I perform in my case is a stromal addition keratoplasty in which we make a a stromal pocket at the depth of around 150 micron with the femtosecond laser. And once the, and then you have to dissect the plane, open this pocket. It's similar to a smile procedure. And this is a, a smile lenticule of other patient of known thickness. And we can insert this lenticule in this pocket. The procedure is very simple. You just have to push it, make sure that it is in the pocket completely, not in the wound. And once it is secured, the epithelium is removed. And you can proceed with the conventional epi of cross-linking. You can see the lenticule is nicely sitting in the cornea and no scarring is there in post-operative period. The so corneal hydrops is another challenge that we face in our OPD sometime. So the management of corneal hydrops is uh, conventionally we used to put sutures, then we shifted to C3F8, and now I'm shifting to C3F8 with suturing in most of these cases because it works very well. So this was a 19-year-old girl referred to me and after air injection, and the, but the swelling didn't resolve, so I did the OCT. You can see there is a cleft persisting in this case after c 3 8 also. So what I would plan is combine intracameral injection with compression sutures. And literature has shown that if you go with the c 3 8 it is better than air. But literature also shows that if you combine with suturing with c 3 8 it will be better than c 3 8 alone. So recalcitrant cases, bigger cleft, suturing is better technique than, than c 3 fit alone. So what you have to do, you have to make a side port. Always constrict the pupil because the lenses are usually clear in these cases. Put c 3 fit and then put full thickness sutures. We have, to very, we have to be very careful not to drop the needle in the anterior chamber. The cornea is usually very soft very delicate in these patients, so we have to be very careful. And sutures has to be very tight, because once the fluid will come out, the sutures will become loose. So you have to put a very tight sutures, so that it will stay in the cornea for some time. So usually four to five sutures works very well and then leave the c 3 inside. And this is a post-operative OCT, the cleft is not there. And this is a post-op three weeks picture of the same patient. You can see the edema is gone, all those suture marks are there. And this is a post of two months, the, this is f further reducing and the patient regained good visual acuity. So you 
So this, these are the other cases of acute coronary high drops. You can see the significant cleft here. Procedure was done, and that on day one, you can see the graft, the edema is almost 50 to 60 percent gone in in one day. And this is the post of three weeks, no edema, only just suture marks. This is another case of significant high drops, and the same procedure was done day one. The cornea is totally clear. So from this to this, just 24 hours. So recovery is very fast with C3FA with the compression sutures. So I've compared my my patient with the C3FA alone with and and C3FA with compression sutures. So with C3FA alone, it usually takes two months time to dissolve the edema completely. But with compression sutures, it don't take more than two weeks for complete resolution of coronal edema. But in cases with coronal scar where there Hydrops is there, it was perforated. So chances of getting DLK is very difficult in these cases. So PKP is a, a standard of choice in these cases when you know it already ruptured, desmatic membrane is already ruptured. So PKP, only one thing we should know that the graft and the host size is same in keratoconus keratoplasties. That and rest everything is same. So with the femto, now we can do femto keratoplasties also. So because it can perform the incision at any angle, at any, at any depth, and you can design any shape. So we'll skip these slides. So in keratoconus, mushroom shape, mushroom pattern is desirable because stroma is a problem and endothelium is healthy. So remove more of stroma and less of endothelium and make a mushroom pattern cut. And this is a femtokeratoplasty. So you can see the pattern cut here with the femto. And then sutioning is done. The graft opposition is very good with the femtokeratoplasty. Because of better position, the healing is very fast. And the you can see the graft opposition intraoperatively. No overriding or underriding of the graft. So this is the post-op picture. The wound opposition is very nice. And this is a deep atrial lamellar keratoplasty, the treatment of choice for all keratoconus cases. We should attempt DALK in all cases. If not, then PKP is the, you can go for PKP. So big bubble technique is the best technique. And uh, you have to be very careful in this in this step. This is a brave slash cut. And uh, once the air escapes from this, inject visco in the cut. You get, will get a cleavage plane and then start cutting the Stroma. <laughs> and once the stroma is removed, the graft is sutured. So coming to the last video. So this is a femto dalk. So this is Zeman machine has a femto dial software. You can do, you can create a femto tunnel for injecting air. So by creating this tunnel, the chances of getting big, big bubble is very high. So this was the most challenging step of performing dial and femto has made it easy for us. So just create a tunnel of desirable length, width, depending on, depending on your cannula size. Once you create the length tunnel and then you have to remove the stroma cut by the femto. And you can see the tunnel here. And you have to inject with the foglass cannula and inject air. And you will get a good big bubble. <laughs>